I'm, I'm gonna drag you. I think they have you live, so I'm gonna put you on on, on stream. All right. I'm. Uh, I'll get the countdown from Helix, right? Uh, I think I'm gonna count you down because I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Neither. <laughs> yeah. All right. Three, two, one. Here we go. All right, we are live with Valkyrie Profile by Sniperwave. Take it away. All right, uh, let's just uh, get right into it. There's a cutscene at the start. We might as well introduce ourselves there. So in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Gamer. So yeah, this is uh, Valkyrie Profile, Covenant of the Plume. The first release in the Valkyrie Profile series, and uh, quite a bit different from the other two. Uh, starting off with a skippable cutscene, since this is a, uh, a pretty good speed game for that reason alone. But yeah, this uh, this game is a tactics game released on the DS. It's quite unloved, um, but not for me. This this game offers a lot more agency than the other tactics games really do. And to explain that, uh, <laughs> we're going to get right into the prologue with a bit of explanation. So this game has f up to four characters you can use at a time. And for, for the overworld movement, it's not that much different from your Fire Emblem or your Final Fantasy tactics. However, um, within combat, as you'll see in a second as we get there, um, every character is assigned their own uh, button. So that is the ABXY, and by, use by pressing any of those buttons, the characters do an attack. Now every character has a, uh, a specific range as well in the overworld, so for example Hugo being a Lancer here has a slightly larger grid than a Swordsman or a Warrior would have. Um, the amount of attacks also differ. Um, those are dependent on either your class if you're a mage, you're limited to one, or by your weapon. In this case, Hugo has two, I think Ansel has three by default. It's a nice bit of cutscene there. Also, first time loss possible coming up. Um, this wolf has a very slim chance to stun me by attacking from the side. If that happens, we lose about 30 seconds. It happens. There's nothing you can do about it. It's got a roll of the punches. But yeah, there's, a, there's a bunch of stats that we're going to be keeping track of. Um, attack and magic speak for themselves. Um, RDM and RST are the uh, defensive stats. RDM being for attack, RST for magic defense. And then there's hit and evade, which also kind of speak for themselves. Uh, and then there's one more, one more thing. So besides from health, we also have to man manage our AP or action points. And depending on what items or skill we use, uh, we lose a certain amount of AP. Uh, you'll lose 20 if you don't use an act. Uh, if you don't use an action, you'll lose, or you'll regain 10 at the end of turn if you use a standard action or any action really. So that's uh, that's everything we keep track of. And with these basic mechanics, we're gonna try and play the game as fast as possible. Now this game does have a bit of history as well, as um, as about six years of it. So all the way at the start, uh, SDA or Speed Demos Archive from back in the day. I actually had this game as a quick route, where with a limited amount of time, multiple people could try their best at getting a fast time by just routing it in the time limit that they had. I believe it was two weeks for this one. And that ended up with uh, Dragon Darch and Claude having, uh, having like a 216 and a 217 respectively. Now, after that, like fast forward like three or so years, back in 2018, when, uh, when I started running this game, and what we found is that this record wasn't really that optimized. Um, every fight had some mistakes. Uh, there was a lot going on still. There was a lot left to do just within the attack orders and just movement in general that we had to use. So I ended up running the game that way. Ended up with a 205. And then the first thing that happens is that a, uh, a person named Huang showed up in my chat after I got a 206. And he literally said, yo, your route is kind of whack. Uh, I can do something about that. And apparently, he was a longtime fan of Dragon Darch. He was waiting for him to return to the game, as he had about three years worth of just experience with the game that nobody knew about. So he basically taught me how to properly route the game. And from there, we kind of broke it until the 144 that is now. Also, first fight done here. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of talk, and I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> But yeah, this fight is basically an explanation of uh, how the combat works, as we've explained here. It's not a lot to it. Um, we are using the two guest characters as they are level 10, compared to our main level main characters level 1. It's just faster. That's, that's really all about it. So this is the uh, second fight in the prologue coming up, after some uh, nice and skippable cutscenes. 
But before that, uh, we're going to see the overworld for the first time. And the overworld is not really that exciting. It basically like, takes you from place to place, but it has some nice music, so that's, that's a big plus. We're also going to change the attack order on one of our characters. So every attack has two properties to it. Um, one being the multiplier and two being a secondary effect, such as a knockup. Uh, we're taking a knockup away from Wolfred, as uh, he only has two attacks. And the reason we do that is not only because uh, knockups are kind of bad in general, but it's also because the other attack just has a better multiplier. So in this fight, we get to deal with uh, sieges. Well, optionally we could, but we don't because it's slow and you get a cutscene for it. But what that does is if you position your characters like in a certain way uh, adjacent to an enemy. So say we have one in front of beh and behind the enemy, you'll, you'll engage a raid, which gives you some buffs. Uh, it charges up the meter faster, lets you attack faster. It's just a lot of small things. Uh, you'll see that you'll see me use that a lot later in the run. But yeah, the, there's also a lot to talk about within the attack order. Um, there's a lot of tech related to it. Like not only does the timing matter, but also your positioning matters. So if you hit an enemy from behind, as you'll see here, um, you'll stun an enemy. And stunning an enemy um, gives you a red gem on the first attack, uh, a 50% chance to get one on the second, 25 on the third, and every attack after you have a 10% to receive one. And what that does is give the character that got the red gem an extra attack. So there's a lot of tech to, to be done with those that attacks as well. I think, I think that's about how they explain within the combat. Um, for now at least, so... Felix, if you have, uh, do you have some wonderful words about this charity we're supporting? Well, we are supporting Sweet Relief, which more or less helps musicians in need. Not even more or less, they do. I just put simply would be the better phrase to use. I don't have any donations to read. Y'all should change that. <laughs> we do have <laughs> open goals, so... Oh yeah, wait, there is one more mechanic actually I haven't explained, which is uh, the despawn timer, which is more so a speedrunning thing than it is a general mechanic. But for some reason, um, every attack has like a different amount of time between when the attack connects and when the enemy starts despawning, which is when the purple circle um, appears around them. So that's the reason why we use Wolfred's attack last. Uh, he has the lowest um, despawn timer of all the characters we have available at this point. It's, it's small things like that, which um, just gives you more agency as a player that makes me enjoy this game a lot more than your average uh, tactics RPG. This game has a lot of depth that you don't really see unless you start running it. So this enemy is kind of a range. Um, there's something that I'd like to refer to as hitboxing, where the enemy's hurtbox can get can slightly displaced and will make your attack miss. Uh, we saw it happen here. If that doesn't happen, there's like a 50-50 chance of actually one-shotting him without needing a fifth attack. It's pretty rare, and we missed out on it, but, you know. It just, it just happens. But yeah, last mission of the prologue here, and we're gonna see the main mechanic of the game, and actually what uh, changes your ending, which is the Destiny Plume. Now, the Destiny Plume is a really interesting item. For the entirety of the combat, you can multiply a character's stats by 10, However, they will be killed off for the rest of your playthrough. So it's kind of a risk reward thing. Also, if you use it too often, you just get game over and you get smited by the gods, but we don't talk about that. It's not going to happen. We have nothing to fear. But yeah, as you can see in this fight here, um, Ansel is quite strong right now, as he's uh, about to one-shot two demons. All this fighting works up an appetite. Oh yeah, voices are on. Um, for some reason, turning voices off actually makes the game slower. So, enemies that do not have a voice line actively playing will take a lot longer to despawn by default, and it just ends up being worth it to keep the voices on. Which, honestly, gives the game a lot of flavor. That's such a strange mechanic, but that does... that seems like it would help the entertainment value. That's so weird, though. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we don't really know what causes it. I feel like it's trying to get, to, like, get a file that just isn't there. Maybe it's a Japanese-only thing, as Japanese does have a... Uh, a voice acting for the cutscenes as well, which English doesn't have. That's the end of the prologue. Uh, 
These are probably the simplest fight in the games that we'll see. But yeah, this game's difficulty curve also in terms of running is really weird. A lot of the runs tend to die in Chapter 1 and Chapter 4. And those are the most random chapters in the game. Um, mostly the AI patterns are fairly fixed otherwise though. Also, this is where we are uh, going to see the end of world record attempts as saving the game is slow and we don't tend to do that in runs. A big rip. But yeah, saving in the game is not the fastest thing. It loses around 10 to 45 seconds depending on where you save. But it just ends up being worth it overall. Um, there's a lot of safety we need to take account of. Like this fight, for example, has a different strat. Um, but also explains the uh, last big mechanic of the game, which is Sin. Now the way Sin works is after putting an enemy to zero health, um, the, the bar will start charging up again and you'll see overkill appear. Now for every percent of damage you do of the enemy's maximum health, you'll gain one Sin. So then up to a maximum of 100, obviously. And depending on how much Sin you have at the end of the fight, you get a different reward. So for example, if you get 100% Sin, you get tier 1. You get 150%, you get tier 2, you get 200%, you get everything. Um, if you don't get enough, you'll get punished, but we'll get into that later as uh, there's some is, there are some interesting things going on with that. Also, this is the first real risk of the, uh, of the route. There's no real way around it, but sometimes two enemies crit and you just die. It, it just happens. Nothing you can really do about that. But it does put the enemies in such a setup where we can save a turn and a half, so it just ends up being worth it overall. But yeah, as Bedsource says in chat, uh, sin is good. We are we are definitely sinning. And speaking of sin, I thought greed was a sin, so why aren't you donating? <laughs> there you go. There you go, segways. I, I've heard segways are appreciated. Yeah, this is the <laughs> first change between the uh, the main route and the actual route. Um, we actually killed the Swordsman here instead of the Sorceress. And the reason for that is the Swordsman has a chance to stun you. Now, whenever you get knocked up, that stun gets negated. So that just is a bit of consistency for the route itself. If you get stunned you. and you cannot retaliate, the run is basically dead, and we don't want that. But yeah, what you just saw us use on Wolfred was Volley's Awakening, which is a plume skill. So, not only does pluming make a character extremely busted for the entirety of the fight, it also grants Wolfred a temporary skill that he can use once in fight for ADAP. Uh, this one specifically is Volley's Awakening, which doubles all his stats. Uh, it does not heal him, so he's at half health, technically. And that's one of the best things you can really abuse in terms of stat boosting. In A ending, you do not get the plume, so it's the only thing you have, which mm -hmm. gives it a lot more utility there, but wow. in here it's pretty limited. Also, the enemy there dropped the Viking Sword. Viking Swords are uh, a pretty good drop. If we don't get one, we can get one in the shop later on. But finding one here is uh, kind of a decent help. Saves a bit of menu time. Also, I'd like to take a moment to just appreciate the sprite work of this game. This game is really lively within combat. There's a lot of, there's a lot of nice smear frames that just work out really well. It's got a good style to it. The battle is won. Yeah, this is the only time we're going to change weapons uh, within the fight. Since we get the Viking Sword, we get to equip it right away, which saves us a bit of menus later on. And this was the end of the fight, really. Uh, we'll be going through a few cutscenes in, uh, in a bit, so... What uh, what kind of music are you into, since uh, that's what we're supporting? Not bad if I do say so myself. I'm more of like an alternative rock kind of person. Um, that's mostly my <laughs> whole thing. Though, I appreciate lots of different genres of like video game music in particular. Ooh. Appreciate the way it's used to create atmosphere, especially. I can definitely agree with that. Good video game music is, uh, it can really elevate a good game. I don't think it can really save a bad game, but a good game can definitely turn into a great game just by the music alone. 
Absolutely agreed. I mean, with not being able to save a bad game, uh, if you don't, if you want a good example for that, go check out the uh, Waterworld on the SNES in terms of OSTs. It's probably one of my uh, my favorite SNES OSTs overall. Yeah, okay, gonna take another save here as this fight is uh, quite random and actually changes on a dime. Um, if we crit on turn one, this route changes drastically. But we found a way to get around it. Um, it doesn't really matter which route you end up with, but one of the routes is a lot safer than the other. We're also going to use the two Ambrosias that we got from the Sin from the last fight to increase Wilford's health. And this actually ends up mattering, as it changes the uh, the aggro from the Archresses at the very start. So yeah, let's see if we crit it or not. I'm hoping to not see one because it's safer, but knowing it's a Marathon will probably not get as lucky. Oh, we actually did not get a crit. All right. Perfect. Makes it a lot easier to get through this. This is sort of our first boss fight coming up. Um, the way most missions work are one of three things. It's either kill the leader, kill everything, or rescue your target, which is kill everything except one character cannot die. I, think, I believe this one is the destroy all opposition one. So it, not, it doesn't really save time just killing the leader, and it's also just not worth it in terms of XP and just movement overall. And that's really something that this game offers. Um, there's a lot of things you can do by mixing your combos up and by the uh, the way you tackle the fights. So if, say, um, this fight doesn't really have a lot of depth, but it has changed a lot over the, over the years. I really don't know how much it saved. I honestly can't recall the old route as well, so there's a moral in here somewhere. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Alright, uh, we're gonna counter this Archus here. This Archus has a very interesting health bar, as we do not kill it with a combined attack from Wolford and Sharifa, but countering her once actually makes her eligible to die, which is a good thing. Also, the one reason this fight is risky is because we really need an item from this that you can only unlock if you get 150% sin. So 195 is the magic number we're shooting for here. As you can see here, uh, we'll just hit the archers with both our combos. So the way this bit of combat works, I guess, I haven't explained this prior. Um, so every character has a certain range, and when a character attacks an enemy, every ally that is uh, that has the enemy within attacking range will also join in on the fight. So you can have up to four characters yourself. I don't know what the limit is for enemies, as I've never really tested that, but I'm, I'm just going to assume it's four. But the same thing applies to them. Say there's three warriors that are about to attack you, you'll you'll probably die, but they all they all get to join in. Also, the the first and only <laughs> one of two uses really of the flare gem. Uh, the flare gem is a reward for getting 200% sin on the last fight. It's basically a one-time use spell that deals a boatload of damage early on, so we're just gonna make the most use of it and kill two enemies with this. killing the second one right here. It's a lot easier to aggro one of the enemies by walking forward first than comparing when comparing it to flare jamming both archers and then tackling them one by one. That's a lot of things. That's one of the first things um, we discovered a lot of time save on when I was routing with Huang. Um, enemies have a really interesting aggro range where once you cross a certain line between the tiles, an enemy will start chasing you or running away depending on what its AI says. And this one specifically is the first time we see it affecting it. Like, you'll see it move forward by four tiles, so we can sneak up behind it and uh, stun kill it to death. So yeah, quickly gonna get the stun here. Attack with Wolf at first afterwards, since um, he's, the he's the biggest beneficiary of the, uh, the gem drop as he deals more damage. Gonna do an extra attack to be safe on the Sin. Uh, the next one is kind of a range. You can get 
birdie if you low roll like three or four times. I've seen it happen before. It's killed a run. It's pretty bad. Wouldn't wouldn't recommend taking a lot of risks in marathon either way. I guess I guess I can also go over all of the classes um, in terms of the range and the simplest way to go about them, I guess. So warriors and swordsmen have the exact same range. Their stats are slightly different, but besides that, they're not that much different. Like swordsmen can move four tiles and warriors can move three, uh, being the biggest difference. Uh, then lancers have a attack range of two, so they can uh, they can hit a four by four or five by five grid rather. Um, may just get a, an extra extension on the range, also have free tiles of movement. And then archresses have a 4 tile range, except that they cannot hit the tiles adjacent to them. There's a bit of, there's a bit of routing around that. Luckily we don't get to use archers for most of the run, because it honestly makes things really frustrating from time to time. Also, for the people with a keen eye, you may have already, or a keen ear, I should say, uh, you might have already heard this, but this entire game's OST is a rearrangement of the first game. Um, if you've ever heard the uh, the Valkyrie profile for the PS1's OST, you'll you'll probably recognize a few tracks here and there. So yeah, that's our first boss fight of the game. Um, there's a cutscene happening explaining a bunch of lore. Uh, as it turns out, Loxel was Sharifa's father and hired to kill her, and they somehow reconciled. There's a moral in there somewhere. Yeah, that was the end of chapter one. Uh, Loxel also joins our party because they end up not killing each other. They're quickly gonna visit our uh, our hometown for a while. As, uh, as we skip a few cutscenes and head into chapter 2. So now the first split of the run really appears. Um, there are three paths you can go on. We're choosing Hruf Walk, or however you want to pronounce that. Um, it has the fast... it's the fastest of the three paths. But it also gives us two of the most broken characters in the game for two very different reasons. So we're, we'll just be gaming for most of this. Gonna take a save because much like the cha the first fight of chapter one, there's a small chance that uh, the run kind of gets the route kind of just gets invalidated on the first turn because he gets stunned twice. It's pretty rare, but might as well not take any risks. Ers is going to add two of those characters to our team. We're adding Lox and Darius. And Darius is one of the weirdest characters in the game, as his damage is fairly low, but his utility is extremely high. Uh, we'll get into why exactly in a bit. Yeah, we're going to boost Wilfred's stats and give him some aggro from Bali's Awakening. And we're going to give him another Might Potion to accentuate this fervor. Uh, this lets us kill both of the uh, the attackers on the counterattack on the end of this turn. Also, once this enemy turn is over, I'm just going to be quiet for a bit because I really want to just enjoy this theme. Probably one of the top three in the game. Sadly though, it is a tri game, so much like other tri games, you'll see uh, you'll see that the, the music gets cut off and reset on every time you re-enter it. Which is kind of a shame. Would have much preferred Vivid Loop, but hey, you can't, you can't win everything. For you. Father. This is also uh, the only fight in the game where we actively go under Sin. Um, the reason we do that is for a bit of AI manipulation coming up. So, going underneath your um, your Sin requirement spawns an enemy named the Realm Stalker, which takes the form of one of the important characters <laughs> in the game. And the Realm Stalkers are extremely strong and extremely dangerous. Uh, they kind of just one-shot most of your characters, but for some super weird reason. Um, in the next fight, its AI completely changes to a point where it just doesn't target your um, your hero that you're moving forward most of the time. Now if it does, uh, we might be in a bit of bad luck. I think, I would estimate the odds at like 1 to 200, give or take. 
for it to happen, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take some risks, I guess. It's a marathon. Might as well have a bit of fun. Yeah, this, this this fight is pretty pretty straightforward. Otherwise, it's probably be uh, one of the best Please. times for donations, if any. Fuck. Unfortunately, I still don't have anything. Though I will take this time to shout out our language restreams. We have our French restream at twitch.tv slash baguette underscore restream, our German restream at twitch.tv slash Germench, and the Japanese restream at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore restream. Huge thank you to everybody involved with all of those to help bring this content to way more people. It's very cool. We really appreciate all the work that, that you guys do. You really got to love the restreams. It's it's just really nice for someone who's for who English isn't the main language to just not being able to watch some runs. Like I can definitely understand that watching a run in a different language can get frustrating. So thanks to all the restreamers for uh, coming out and doing this on this fine day. Yeah, they put a lot of work into making these marathons more accessible, and it's always very cool to see. Agreed on that entirely. This is another case of uh, AI Manip coming up, where we only move one character past the uh, the aggro line, as it like to refer to. So by moving just Darius two tiles forward, you'll see that the bat will always walk down an exact four tiles, which puts it in a really really good spot for us. This is one of the only spots where you can really see uh, what the AI Manip does. So we're gonna see why uh, why exactly Darius is as broken as he is, and the reason for that is this. He is a one-man knock-up knockdown combo, and what that does is it's the only other way to stun an enemy aside from attacking him from behind. And getting some extra extra attacks in your characters ends up being really fast as the the game progresses. What did you expect? You'll see a lot of escalating um, as we as we get along with the run. Also, that bat you see over there can be a dingus uh, and lose me two minutes. I don't know why. It's just some weird AI things going on. I haven't seen it in a while, and I probably just jinx it, but it's it's something to mention. <laughs> but yeah, and again, again, this is one of the the more long, straightforward fights in the game. There's two of them where um, not a lot can go wrong, but it's just it just kind of drags on for a bit. Also, for some reason, this is one of the laggier maps in the game. Um, this map specifically has a longer time between when you can actually start your inputs and when the menu pops up. I don't know what causes it. I don't think anyone really does. But if I had to make a guess, I think the particle effects cause a little bit more lag. I mean, looking at how the game really looks, considering it's 240p, I can, I can see it's pretty pushed for the DS capabilities. Alright, moment of truth, is the bat going to be a dingus? The answer is no, let's go. Like again, I really don't have an idea what causes the bat to uh, randomly fly, fly out over the ravine. It's pretty easy to fix, but it's annoying when it happens. Yeah, last bit of fighting here, um, before we hit the uh, the main enemy, I guess. It's gonna hit it with a stun, and just go absolutely ham on it. 
Okay, this is the first time you saw the, the Soul Crush mini pop up, I guess. So, the bar in the bottom left has a number that counts up to 100. Always Once you hit 100, you'll see the Soul Crush mini pop up. And what a Soul Crush is, it's basically a uh, really high powered attack that a character gets to use once per combat. You'll see it in the next one because we actually do need it to kill. And every character has their own uh, their own soul crush, and every mage, depending on what spell they use, will have a different grand magic, which is their variation of the soul crush. We'll be seeing a good few spells. Uh, we won't, sadly, will not be seeing the best spell as it has been routed out recently. But maybe, maybe I'll bring it back. We'll see. We'll see how the how the cookie crumbles with time. If we have enough time, I'll probably just put it in as it's one of the more interesting animations in the game. This is going to be a recurring theme, where you'll see Darius used to uh, save a lot of time with his knock-up combo, giving us a lot more attacks. And luckily, much like any other thing with a large animation, you do have an option to skip it. This one being no exception. Alright, I'm, I'm actually going to, to, to save. I think I've jinxed like too many things and I should probably save just in case the 1 in 200 happens. I feel I feel like I'm, I'm not on the right side of karma right now. So yeah, some saves do take longer than others. You'll see by how long the menu takes to load that it's just not worth going for in runs. Um, runs do tend to die the execution mistakes pretty often, as there is no 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 going back, no confirmation menus, no 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 nothing. You mess up, you mess up, and you probably lose a lot of time. Also, we're gonna do a very quick shopping trip here. Goodbye, shopkeep. And we bought our first technique of the game. Um, you can teach them the characters once and they'll uh, they'll get different effects, but we're not going to see it here. As uh, we're going to just manip our way through and kill the leader. It's going to take a few turns, but for some reason when the Realm Stalker is there, it just doesn't cross any aggro lines. I'm not sure how it works. It's pretty cool though, it takes a while to execute. Alright, moment of truth. Uh oh. Ah, uh, we got 200 it. Unlucky. Can't believe it. <laughs> this this would be this would be at a marathon, huh? So uh Yeah, that's uh that might be our first death. There's a backup. We'll we'll see if it works. This might be our first death of the run chat. We might be in trouble. This is quite literally the opposite of gaming. And with gaming, I mean, I was gaming with you, chat. I, uh, I kind of just got you there, hopefully. So this is one of the uh, the few unintended mechanics of the game, where um, when you revive a character, you can use the Better Union Plume to put it, to revive it in the tile in front of you. Now this fight's pretty weird, where um, <laughs> or you can kind of just cross over a wall because of it. Um, for some reason, the devs didn't really account for height differences between the um, between where it gets revived. So we just kind of get to cheese the fight by, by cheating her over the wall, killing two enemies, including the leader, and ending the fight. And I really hope I got someone in the chat with this. I always try to go for something like this in every marathon with a different explanation. Also, this AI doesn't know what to do, so it just passes the turn and gives up. I'd like to think he's just done by seeing a... Uh, a glowing red teenager just absolutely murder his colleague. I I, I can kind of relate, honestly. Yeah. That's that's the end of this fight. Uh, sadly, this is the only one that's left in the route. Um, we found an alternative strat that turned out to be faster than cheating a character over the wall, so this is the only time you'll see it. Okay, 
Yeah, we do need the 150% for the falchion there in order to kill the next boss in uh, in one go. However, it's still quite risky. Also, we kind of just killed off Sharifa to go faster. Uh, that's just how the game. That's just how the cookie crumbles, really. So we're gonna quickly make a save because this is probably one of the most random fights in the game for no reason at all. Um, there's a brigand that can sap power you, which is lo which lowers your power by like 20%, which basically puts the boss out of kill range, and we don't want that. Turns out to be pretty bad to uh, start losing time. Yeah, this game also doesn't really take kindly the the bad patterns and execution mistakes, so we're just gonna take this one a little slow. We're also gonna start with uh, of the tactics here, which is dashing in this case, which basically makes it so you cannot do any other action except hold, but you get three extra tiles of movement, which turns out to be really useful if you want to go fast. Also, most characters have a uh, have a specific voice line for item usage that we get to hear here. I never miss. Also, apparently, Locks while saying "I never miss" means you. He Im means that he implies that he can miss a dash. I'm not entirely sure how that works. If someone knows. Nice, dude. It's the bad pattern. It's the one thing I don't want to see. Amazing. All right, so so there's no there's no self reset option in this game. So we're just gonna reload and uh, do that do that all again. But yeah, sap power is pretty bad as it turns out. I've gotten gamered by the game. And I guess while we recover, uh, Helix, we have uh, we have some time for some quick words. Words. I can speak words. Yo, um... word. I still don't have any donations, surprisingly. Oh, I lied. <laughs> One came in as I was saying that. $20 from XCXCR. I lost track. Are, are we gaming or not? Uh, I've just gotten gamered by the host. I thought there were no donations, and then there, there apparently were donations. I got gamered by the donator. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess we all got gamered. I gamered the audience, the audience gamered me. It's a, it's, it's a nice one-for-one, one, really. Luckily, I had something to plug, but we can save that to the intermission. Yeah, we do have it's a bit of time cool. here as well, if you uh, if you really want to. Why not? I was going to talk about uh, Midwest Speedfest 2021, hopefully happening at 2DCon 2021. Fingers crossed in Minneapolis on August 27th, 29th. www.2dcon.net. To learn more about that, more, more speedrun marathons, essentially. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we, speedrun we put on marathons Mopoli. are cool. Agreed. I'd say for everyone out there, um, once the in-persons are back, just go miss. visit a local marathon. They're a lot of fun. There are a lot more local marathons now than there were even a couple years ago, too, I found. Yeah, I've been staff at one for four years already. Almost. I mean, I'm technically on a break now, but it's basically been four years. Ah, uh, maybe? Alright. That's weird, but, it, but it'll work. It'll do. Set power on Darius isn't that much of a problem. Usually. And I say usually with a, with a bit of a grain of salt there. Um, we're gonna need to set up. We're gonna need to do a backup setup for this though. Uh, I need to think about this. This hasn't happened to me in a while where I got unlucky on this fight. We're gonna set up a Trinity Fork here. Trinity Forks are kind of interesting. Um, they make the red gem a gold gem and make your attack speed faster. He's hit. Okay, the game is kind to me, that's good. But yeah, what the gold gems do is they basically give two attacks instead of one. What went wrong? Oh no, I need to reset again. <sighs> I forgot something that I probably should have done. Uh, focusing is hard in this game is pretty relentless. So what I was supposed to do there, uh, instead of messing up, is uh, is use Volley's Awakening and doubles, double Wilfred's stats, but mess messing up is pretty costly. This is a good example of it, I guess. Luckily, this isn't the worst fight in the game, and luckily we do have a bit of leniency with the estimate, um, as I do take account for some of the worst RNG. And the worst thing I've seen so far is a 9-minute time loss that you have absolutely no control over. However, that is an astronomically small amount of uh, percentage to happen. 
But yeah, happy to get all the all the bad luck and bad patterns out early on as well. It's pretty easy to forget things when you see rare patterns overall. It's a lot to keep track of. This is it kind of mirrors the uh, the casual experience of the game pretty well, I'd say. This game is a this game is definitely a mental exercise on its own. Like I'm making this look easy because the routing has been uh, has been changed over the years a good bit. But man, routing this was a pain. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit this fight used to take like no turns at all, but we used to plume a character, and we kind of just want to use that in a previous fight to make it a lot easier. With making it easier, I mean save six minutes, and that turns out to be quite worth it. See, hopefully, hopefully we'll uh, we'll do it this time. Third time's the charm. It has to be. Are you for? Me? Unbelievable. <laughs> I jinx that. I I I I don't like to believe in jinxing, but that's that's unlucky. But yeah, that's uh that's the part of running the RNG games. It's uh if it goes wrong, it keeps going wrong. Gotta gotta deal with it and move on. This is also the reason why I uh, I renamed the split to Easy in air quotes fight. Um, <laughs> it's it's fundamentally this fight isn't the hardest, but it tends to just absolutely poop on you every now and then. Today being no exception. This is probably one of the biggest reset points in the run as well. Um, while you're at it. Yeah, chat. While I'm uh, while I'm trying to get through this, how's uh, how's your day been? Hopefully, everyone is having a, a fine first day. Personally, I have been very busy. <laughs> I, uh, As you can imagine. I can imagine, yeah. Quite so, even. And we are really getting unlucky on this. I have, I've seen sap power once, like pretty often. I've not seen it twice in free attempts ever. So I guess uh, I guess this is one of those marathon classics of I've never seen this before. Never before seen in a marathon, big mark. I never miss. It's a classic. Every time, gotta have him. Always, always, just always like lurking around the corner. I swear to God. Oh my lord! Ho! Oh. All right, he sat powered the mage. Good. I was very scared for a second. Uh, that changes my pattern as well. Reflect sorcery is also one of the random things that can happen. That one's exceedingly rare, actually. Um, it basically makes it so we can't damage her with sorcery spells, meaning we have to set up Eternity Fork for this. Interesting game so far, that's for sure. Let's actually use volleys this time and double our stats. That's that's pretty good. Kind of unfortunate. Oh yeah, speaking of, uh, I'm seeing Shasta in the chat. I do believe uh, that there is something massive, or dare I say, huge coming up. Why did I do that? Oh yeah, this is this is uh, that's reflect sorcery in action. If uh, if we didn't kill Natalia there, Loxol would have taken the the damage afterwards, and he would have died from it. I forgot that it didn't knock up in this one. I, I got kind of scared for no reason there. Yeah, finally got past this fight. We're we're still looking pretty decent on time, so no fear. And if worse comes to worse, I do have some backup saves for the worse than longer fights that are coming up still. So we should we should be fine. In air quotes, should. That's the end of chapter two. Uh, Natalia just kind of dies uh, because we killed her. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna go into the lore of this game all this much, um, mainly because I really do enjoy the lore of this game, and I would very much encourage everyone to play the game and get to know it yourself. But also because there is a lot of tech behind the the game that we have to explain, as you might have uh, as you might have noticed by me rambling for the past 45 minutes. This is also where one of the first uh, big node route differences came in. Um, the next fight, I think we saved three turns just by 
finding new strats. I don't know how exactly the old route went, as it's been three years since I started running and most of the things haven't really changed. But I do remember taking things out one by one instead of doing two per turn and just calling it a day. Yeah, quick shopping menu once again. We're getting, uh, we're getting a new attack for Loxwa and Frigid Damsel. Sadly, we don't get to see a Freed Caress, which is the uh, the grant magic for the fire spell, but we do get to see Tidal Wave once or twice. Getting a Lotus Want there. Setting some spells on this guy. We will be seeing Firestorm in this fight specifically, um, since it does have a very good use here. And we also gave Loxwell Spell Reinforce and Might Reinforce. Now, Might Reinforce is pretty interesting, as uh, as it does give a bit of RNG, uh, as it might reinforce. Aha, very funny. Um, but in all seriousness, it gives you 50% extra attack. It's pretty good. It's extremely useful overall. Might reinforce. And this with Volley's Awakening can triplicate Wilfred's damage, which is pretty strong overall, I'd say. It's a... Uh, <laughs> it has some utilities, one could say. That's not why we kept Firestorm. We kept Firestorm for this exact fight. Now you might have remembered that I said that a knockup and a knockdown cause a stun. Now Firestorm is a knockup, and Rosia here starts with Sacred Javelin, which is a knockdown, so we basically have an instant combo to go off with. Grim vengeance! How does it Also can I get some how does it's in the chat, since we do skip the uh, most of this voice line? <laughs> oh, I'm not saying most, we just skip the last For word. You, father. Yeah, really, though, how does it? Only only true gamers know how it does, but it do. You just have to be in the know. Also, we put Darius on this exact tile for only this, this engagement, by the way. Uh, this beetle will attack any other character except... <laughs> instead of Darius. <laughs> and we kind of need him in this position to make our life a bit easier. Huh. This fight again just gets pretty straightforward afterwards. We we hold with Darius here. Do another knock-up combo, kill this bug with Fulfred. Now that he has a triple attack. I'm just gonna go from here. It's not the longest fight, it's not the hardest. But figuring out, like, exactly why this combo works is pretty interesting. It also, for some reason, doesn't play the uh, the animation with the ducks above his head when you stun him this way. Which is interesting. The battle is won. Yeah, Beetle's walking forward here. Um, you can put Wilfred exactly in between and kill the left Beetle. Um, we do need 200% Sin, which ends up being 300 here, uh, which is why we get 200 from the or we get 200 from the first two. We get 20 or so here, and we can, depending on the range here, um, we might need an extra attack on the other. But we'll end up with 300 regardless. And that's all our roll, so I'm just gonna have to do an extra attack. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. It doesn't end up losing a lot of time just because of the the, the despawn timer and how that works. We got a crit from Rosia, so I might not need the extra attack, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I said so. Grim vengeance. How does? And we get another. How does it from Wolfert there? 
Um, I guess I guess I can explain the main part of the storyline. Uh, Wolfred thinks that the Valkyrie has killed his father and taken him to uh, to the afterlife, and he's just on a quest for vengeance. Uh, the exact details don't really matter, and I would very much encourage you to look into the lore yourself once again. <laughs> but that's that's the idea of the game. We're trying to slay a Valkyrie. Um, depending on how much you plume, you get a different ending. We're going on the worst ending because it's faster. And it's faster by an hour or so because we have some broken interactions to go through. Uh, <laughs> you might have, you might be thinking, Sniper, you just kind of... You know, you're kind of blazing through these fights already. How much worse does it get? And that's where... Uh, <laughs> we'll find that out in a few fights from now. But it, it does get pretty funny, trust me. Uh, speaking of funny, this is one of the f one of the only fights remaining that actually has an RNG killer, where an enemy cannot get stunned by Gleipnir spawns, which is the uh, the plume ability we got from Sharifa. So we're just gonna take a uh, a bit of a safety net here. Uh, let me see if I did the deployment right. I did. Shoutouts to notes. We're getting something as bad. We're gonna change Loxo's attack here to Frigid Damsel. Uh, there's not much to it really. The the animation's faster. It's it's pretty pretty cut and dry. Okay, we're gonna move Gwendol, uh in this specific spot over here. And we're gonna put him next to the armor. Now the armor will kill him if he gets to attack, but... We're just gonna increase Wolfred's magic attack as the chance of paralysis from Gleipnir's bonds actually affects the chance of... Uh, of it hitting or not, or affecting the enemy or not. And I swear, I've only seen it happen once, and it wasn't even to me, and now I'm still scared in every marathon run I do. Like, Dragon Darch got owned uh, during one of his marathon runs, and I just cannot... I, I need I need to uh, just do that every time now. Might reinforce. Also, we have to Might Reinforce Gwendol here, otherwise he won't one-shot the way we want to. Just gonna dash him forward real quick. And we're going to hear a uh, one of the best voice lines in the game, in my opinion. For many different reasons, but the fixed Scottish accent really helps. Over the battlefield. Unto me thy power yield! What's happening to me? Also, it also like somehow stutters because it just blocks the channel from the music transition. Which, uh, which only makes it better, really. For some reason, um, having a voice line like that at the end of turn will make it stutter. It's nice that we get to use it in the run. It's a lot of like small bugs you get to hear every now and then. But yeah, we had to might reinforce Gwendol here, otherwise this wasn't a one-shot and we wouldn't get enough sin. Uh, we're looking at 150% to uh, in terms of what we want. And we would have gotten around 200 out of 225 if we didn't might reinforce there. Now, Pluming Gwendol is, uh, is, is his main use. Now, not only does he one-shot the boss right there, which is honestly quite normal, all things considered in this run. Um, but it also gives us the single most broken and hilarious ability in the game, Invader's Warcry. Uh... <laughs> It does a lot of special stuff. Also, that cutscene there will happen every time you uh, you do plume a character. That's basically the transition of uh, of the ending you get. So we basically just went down the C ending. We basically doomed ourselves there. We do not get the save between some of fights. Uh, this one being a prime example. But this is where Vayar's Warcry shines, and Vayar's Warcry is a ability that gives you. Sudden death to every single attack. Now, sudden death, as you might guess, uh, just kills an enemy. It has to be alive. It cannot be an undead or an inanimate object. But it does one shot, and it does so depending on the magic stat of a user. And we have two mages here, so you can kind of see how this fight is going to end up going. And this is a uh, this is also why uh, why C ending is a lot faster than the others. Instant death turns out is pretty broken. Who would have guessed? So yeah, you're gonna see a lot of uh, a lot of people just drop like flies. Also, this is one of the first and only examples where we don't get to go for 
um, for the sin required. We basically have we have the ability to go under without getting punished because the first fight of the chapter following you will not get a realm Always stalker no matter what. Which actually turned out to be quite the help because getting sin on this fight when you're basically doing everything in two turns is pretty difficult. So gonna move up a single tile for some reason it um, it changes the AI on the sword someone there. So if I wouldn't have moved, the sword someone would have actively gone to my side and attacked me. However, if I move up a tile, for some reason she just moves in front, which means you'll never stun and you get the killer with the counter attack every single time. I've seen worse. But not oh yeah, this is uh, this is the start of instant death. The game. Uh, <laughs> you'll be you'll be seeing this a lot throughout the run. If we're not going for mass paralysis, we're probably gonna kill everything in a few turns, or do both. As uh, as some fights later on will uh, will have you show. Yeah, while we're, while we're insta killing enemies, uh, Helix. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Well, I'm doing pretty well because I am seeing twenty five dollars here from end of days three oh seven. Says Valkyrie's profile less than three. Love the PS one game. Greetings from Germany, Ramel Germich. Amazing. And this game really went under the radar. For some reason, this one popped off in Japan, but really didn't in the West. Uh, I honestly haven't ever seen a tactics game like this that gives the player a lot of agency. Like, the fact that you have the face buttons for every character means there's so much depth in the uh, in the fighting itself. And speaking of Valkyrie Profile, um, this game, like the way it's made, is actually what the original plan was for uh, for Valkyrie Profile 1 before they turned it into what it is, which, in my opinion, is quite better. Quite a bit. Um, I do I do really appreciate the RPG aspects, but overall, I think they merged the combat systems pretty well. There's a lot of, uh, like again, just a lot of depth is a good thing. Makes for a surprisingly good speed game as well. I also real quick want to echo Mr. Shasta's message in chat that he will wear his gamer hat for his run after this if we reach $800 by the end of this run. Alright, so how far are we? We are $48 away. Alright chat, you know what to do. Greed is a sin. And I know I know singing is good in this game, but in real life, you, you know you shouldn't do that. Let's get that gamer mm -hmm. hat. We have some, some incentives to put that toward too, so you get a two for one here, really. Actually a sell on money. And it goes toward a good cause. Three for one. This is great. What a steal. Yeah, we're using Loxwell's attack over Lisalata. I know Lisalata has a higher chance, but Frigid Damsel's animation is faster. And we can always keep Lisalata in case he evades. It's increasingly rare, but it can happen at any point, and some some in some cases actually just kill their own straight up. It's uh, <laughs> it's very interesting in running this game, and uh, if you're if you're seeing it in that light, there's a lot that can just turn on a dime. This is also the first fight where um, that I can possibly skip with a uh, with a backup save. If things go horribly sour, I'll just explain the rest of the fight and just move on to the next. Um, as I I'm not at the best pace. I think I have like two two or three tries, so we should get through it. Preparation is good, that's for sure. Would encourage everyone to have their uh, their backup saves at the ready if they uh if they do a marathon run with a lot of RNG like this one. I guess I should explain the shopping tech we do, because there's actually a bit of menu tech here. Um, you can just do the up and down uh, movement as well, but if you hold Y, you'll move down an entire menu. Also, I'm going to take a bit of time to focus, because this is the uh, the single longest menu in the game. There's a lot of things I need to keep track of.
All right, that's everything. That's a lot of inputs. <laughs> And you have to you have to imagine like there's a there's a bit of delay where the menu won't take any inputs. Uh, it's it's actually pretty difficult to menu in this game, all things considered. Take this. We are a gaming. We're also gonna cast Sacred Javelin on this random tile on the ground. Uh, there's actually an enemy behind the tree that we need to hit in order to aggro them and make them walk forward, but. Oh, hey, nice, he evaded. That's uh, not going to change anything, but it's kind of annoying. And it's time for instant death, again. Uh, instant death still pretty powerful, and this is a potentially bad thing. We usually want the archer to go first, but we can always hope to not get stunned. If at least a lot of dies, we're in, in some deep trouble. Just have to luck out. Hey, nice, we lucked out. Amazing. So Lisa Lotta can technically take two fights with the armor she has equipped. Um, we're doing this for safety purposes, but it's it's my, it's very common to get attacked twice. There's ways to get around it, but you need to be extremely lucky. I think I managed to work up and most of them make pa make some patterns impossible anyway. So armor armor is good. Lisa Lotta is only the, uh, the is also the only character that we actually give armor in this game. The rest just doesn't get attacked because instant death is just too broken. Yeah, she can take the beating from the archer here. Um, after this, um, after she kills him, she actually level up, levels up and goes back to full health, so there's no risk at all. We're also using Lightning Bolt over uh, over Frigid Damsel now. As it turns out, uh, Lightning Bolt does more damage and is just a like two frames slower than Frigid Damsel in animation but time, so it just ends up being worth it overall over to shopping and the uh, menuing overall. Quite nice. It's a very recent thing we found, dude. It's like two weeks ago. There's a lot of randomness in this fight specifically. Um, enemies can do a lot of different things, most of them bad, some of them less bad. <laughs> there, there really aren't a, a lot of good patterns in this one. I just have to hope we get through this and at least a lot of doesn't die. Like as long as least a lot of doesn't die in the first two turns, we usually just get to scrap it out. Even though we might lose a few turns. That's completely fine. Dying is the worst thing. There's one excessively bad thing that can happen that costs you nine minutes here, but we already got way past that point. I think I managed to work up a sweat. Like it requires a very weird setup of enemies and patterns. Like, uh, one of the archers has to guard reinforce an armor at a very specific location so he doesn't move forward anymore, and then the archer has to guard re reinforce himself so he doesn't walk forward. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of moving parts there. Yeah, this brigand ends up being exactly in range, so we just get to hit it with a, uh, with a quick lightning bolt to kill it. As again, instant death is based on the magic stat, and having two mages makes that really, really easy. Also, I should note that Wilfred is sort of a mage. Um, so he has every stat of his has the same growth curve as a regular swordsman would, except his magic. Uh, he does have the magic stat growth of a mage. So he, you'll see him hit a lot more, uh, a lot more instant deaths than he honestly should. I never miss. But yeah, from here we're we're usually fine in terms of patterns. There's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of consistency from here on out. Like usually, you can just scrap it out unless Lisa a lot of dies for some for some extremely weird reason. The vampire using a weird pattern here, though. Uh, that might ch that might throw a wrench in my plans. So normally he moves to the uh, the tile left of Lisa a lot instead of forward and uses a field spell on us. But this time it didn't go through. We'll see how this ends up going. Oh, uh, that's that's annoying. That's actually really annoying. Uh, do I kill here? I'm I'm not sure if I kill the vampire here, but we'll figure it out. We shouldn't die in retaliation if, anyway, and we do kind of need to get on that tile regardless. If uh, if you want things to go optimally. I also we get Reinhilda here. Uh, Reinhilda is broken for some very different reasons than any other character. Um, she has the highest multipliers in the game. 
And she has an attack stack growth of a warrior. She's also an old lady just wielding a ballista like nobody's business. Like, those things are heavy. Like, she has to be extremely buff. Speaking of buff, we're gonna just might reinforce her real quick. Just the uh, upper attack by 1.5. And hopefully kill this vampire. I'm actually not sure how the ranges work out, um, but we'll, we'll see. That is not a good look, but we'll probably get through. Again, Ryan Hilda does a lot of damage. Like, it should not be understated. So we're gonna add Wilfred's combo to the mix here, just to increase the combo meter. Um, every combo meter increases the, uh, the attack of the next attack by... Or, like, the damage by the next attack by a bit. Why do we go under so heavily? That's weird. We should have ended with another Soul Crush there. I'm not entirely sure what happened. I guess we'll take a little longer to kill the Archer in the back. Um, this shouldn't be too much of an issue. I'm actually quite unsure what happened there. But hey, you should die regardless. We're fine. Like, optimally, I'd kill the Archer. Um, on this turn specifically, since Instadef is still active, but because the Vampire was blocking the tile, we actually didn't get to do that. That's not the biggest issue, like, nobody should die at this point. It's just gonna take an extra turn to get there. And since we do have dashing and an archers of our own, I, I don't think range will be an issue. We'll see. Like, again, this is what I mean with needing to scrap this out. Like, this fight this fight is just extremely random. A lot of moving parts. Them, those parts being completely random and all based on the AI. This one's gonna attack it from behind, so we'll always see a stun here. Luckily, he only has one attack, so we don't really get punished from it. So the archer does move forward. Oddly enough, target locks targets locks well. That's actually kind of good for us. Might die? Doesn't die. That's good. So what I think I'm going to do is just kill both armors on this turn, have Loxwell level up, and then uh, and then tackle the archer afterwards. Since Wilford is in kind of a weird position. Same goes for Renhilda. I don't think I can get both mages in range comfortably. This is also the first instance where we can see blocking. Um, enemies have a random chance to block physical attacks. Uh, you'll see it by shield animation. However, um, some attacks are unblockable. Uh, we don't have one here, but hitting them with magic will actually disable that blocking for a while as well. So we get the guarantee of this fight here. of you would not suffice to match me. And honestly, considering how scrappy this was, this is actually not the worst thing that can happen by a long shot. Also trying to think if I can actually kill the archer at this point. I might actually give it a try. I think I do have a turn off for it. Like, I'm not- the only thing I'm really worried about is not being able to get a Soul Crush on Renhilda. And I'm not sure if I can deal enough damage in order to actually kill it. Oh, we'll give it a shot, though. That's actually interesting. I'm not sure how that exactly works out with the math. Um, I'm trying to think if the... the meter can actually go up to 100. Ah, uh, you know what. Let's not do that. Let's just end the turn. Take it safe. Animations take a while within the fighting, and we're still on decent pace. There's not a lot to fear. So it does move backwards, that's kind of frustrating. Yeah, luckily if this if we're past this, there's only one really bad fight left. Um <laughs> and considering this was a first try, uh, this is this is more than fine in my book. If the dudes dash for it with Wolfred and get there, and then uh, we'll be on our merry way.
Okay, so we would have actually needed Wilfred there. That's good. That, that means my gamble turned out to be the right call. And I'm gonna do the do the casual. That's never happened before because I can actually say that. Um, <laughs> there, there is a million different ways this fight can turn out. I I wouldn't be surprised if there's like 2,000 patterns I haven't seen yet. And if anyone wants to pick up this game, I would very much recommend just doing this fight like a hundred times just to see whatever can happen. There's a lot of random stuff going on. That being said though, I'm going to take one of the slowest saves in the game. Um, because the next fight also has a bit of risk involved. Uh, it, it can also... It, you all see what, what can happen on turn one. Um, so if turn one goes well, the rest of the fight will go well, assuming no execution mistakes. But you're still you're still gonna need to be careful. Like we can still get owned by by luck there. It's it's pretty easy, chat. Just just get lucky, forehead. This is where we get to see uh, Sacred Javelin shine, uh, pun intended, obviously. <laughs> Field spells are pretty busted. This uh, is the name of the game here. We're also going to plume blocks while casually here. Uh, we don't really have a use for him anymore. Uh, we actually used to plume Lisa Lada for various reasons here. Mainly ha her having higher stats, but we found a ray around it, so we're just going to plume blocks one instead. What is this power? Also, this is the single biggest jam in the game, so if you have some uh, some Sour Pleases or any other jam emotes, this is uh, probably the best time to post them. Good USP Fest has a jam emote. Yo, let's go. Hey, so, so what you're saying is that people could use their Twitch Prime and uh, support the channel for free? Is that what you're trying to say? Not even just support the channel, but all Twitch revenue this month, or at least during this event, will go towards Sweet Relief as well. Right, so we didn't get the optimal pattern here, but it wasn't bad at all. Um, having the Swordsman move forward is fine. It's gonna lose us around a minute and a half of time compared to what optimally happens, but it's not the worst. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is the Archers and the Swordsman both move forward and I have to reset. This, this honestly is fine. The main thing is that we can kill two enemies with a field spell on a turn. And the Archers and the, uh, the Golem. Making that possible there is pretty nice. The Brigand kind of suiciding himself makes it a little easy to deal with the, the rest of the game as well, since we do get a spell reinforce off instead of having to attack it. Also, we just stalk for the first time there. Uh, stalk basically makes you invisible to the AI. Um, you'll still activate them if they're in an aggro zone, which Coincidentally, actually matters in this game. If we go into the aggro zone stocked where uh, the realm stalker is, he will actually just kill the rescue target straight up. I would not recommend doing that as it dying is bad. Luckily, this isn't the worst rescue mission in the game. Uh, that one belongs to A ending, where there's a rescue mission where your rescue target just randomly dies turn one with you not having any counterplay at all. Not sure what went wrong in the development, but that doesn't seem intended at least. Definitely a mainstay of the A ending run, which I've been uh, putting some effort in most for most of this year. A ending, A ending is quite a wild ride as a speed run. Yeah, the swordsman stun now. The realm stalker is not, which actually is another uh, case of the split path in uh, in the routing here. We can play with his AI a Never little bit. Miss. Yeah, Loxel's Plume, he's pretty broken for the rest of the game. Um, and I really like the design of, uh, of being able to use your, your Destiny Plume as a get out of jail free card at the cost of your uh, of one of your party no members. Like, it really makes you think about who you want to keep in your party and who you, do, who you not want to keep. And the Plume skills Always just add on top of that, like, especially in routing. I mean, we kind of have the luxury of Gleitmir's Bonds and Veyr's Warcry being ex exceedingly useful. 
But casually, there's a lot of use to most of them. So yeah, this is why we want to unstalk Darius specifically this turn. If we wouldn't, this Realm Stalker now activates and kills Fiona, which is a re which is a rescue target. Uh, that's not something you want to happen. That's uh, that's one thing I had to find find out the hard way, as I didn't check that in uh, in routing originally, and Darius was still stalked. And the very first run I did with that route, uh, I stalked well, and entered the aggro range of the Realm Stalker. Thinking it was paralyzed, but it was not. So he just kind of killed the, the rescue target and killed the run at the same at the same time because we don't save. <laughs> that was that was quite the wild ride. Take this. That's just some things you you learn the hard way as you as you play in route games. Like I definitely say that the routing process of this game has been uh, has been very interesting in every single ending. And even even to this day, we we keep finding new stuff. I never miss. Which adds a it still adds a lot of depth to it. Like mostly it's small things like not being not using Dark Savior anymore, which actually was found two weeks ago. There's a small change in five six, depending on an enemy drop now that I never considered. And it's it's that bit of time save that just keeps adding up and makes the the world record just a bit faster. Um, if you really want to see how much Always of a pet project this is of mine, I would recommend going to the leaderboard of this game and turning the obsolete runs on. You'll kind of see the, the progress this game has, has seen in the past three years. Okay, Realm Sucker not being paralyzed is good. Um, that just means that we can kill him without a spell reinforce, which is really good. Um, spell reinforce wears off after five turns, and if he ends up being paralyzed, we get to attack him on turn six, which is when Loxwell's spell reinforce expires. Okay, just in case the swordsman doesn't kill himself on Fiona there, um, we're actually gonna do a backup setup where we get uh, one shot him regardless. This. this would be the normal strat, but if he moves forward that way, it's better just take the time loss overall than the rec than the risk it. And we get to see some of the smoothest animation in the game. Like, Fiona's attack animations are really well done. Yeah, she basically kills him uh, unless he evades within three attacks. So what should happen is we get to set up Lee Salada there and uh, use Vayer's Warcry next turn. We're just gonna set her. Uh, we're just gonna put her in position for the next turn, just in case it doesn't. It, he doesn't die. Like Fiona will attack him. He'll counter attack on Fiona, and then the same thing happens again, and he dies unless he evades, which is surprisingly common, as Fiona's hit stat isn't the highest with her being a warrior. Kind of makes sense as she's wielding quite the big weapon. Oh, also she can technically die if he crits every single attack. I figured out. Um, we haven't seen it happen. I was just kind of messing around with uh, with some some task tools, seeing if I could ma manipulate crits, and it ends up uh, it ends up being uh, being possible to see nine crits from this guy. Which uh, the chance of that is uh, is quite literally zero. <laughs> Unless you actively try to go for it. Alright, so we do kill. That's perfect. No way! I'm seeing a lot of no ways. Does that mean that Shasta's wearing a gamer hat? Not yet. But soon, hopefully. 48 more dollars. I'd say about 40 minutes left in this run as well. Uh, assuming something goes wrong still. God, I would love to see Shasta in a gamer hat. That uh, that hey, would quite too. literally be huge. <laughs> Any Shas gamers? Hey, I'm gonna gonna need a bit of time to focus on this one again. Um, there's another long menu coming up. The short uh, the shorter one is the shopping menu. Luckily. 
but everything that comes after is quite quite long. Forgetting something, I'm not sure what. That's what I'm forgetting. All right, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of things that they go over in this in this menu. This one's this one's changed very recently, so I do get lost a bit more often than the than the one in 4-1, which hasn't changed since the original reroute. There are more instant death fun times to be had here. Um, this one showing off the new Offener's bow that we've obtained, and the Offener's bow is a very interesting weapon. Um, I'll go over it once we enter combat with Reinhilda, but it, it has a very interesting interaction with instant death that uh, basically makes getting Sin quite trivial. I also saw us. Uh, we also set us saw us set up counter attack on Auguste, which is useful in the uh, in the next fight coming up. It's just easier to do all the menuing in one go. I'm seeing a question if this game is hard to learn. I wouldn't say it's the hardest to learn. Um, I am still planning of making a marathon safe strat, as the notes I currently have, I use all the risky strats. But assuming you, you're using marathon strats and you're saving, you can pretty easily learn this game, I'd say. This game is also very rewarding to learn, overall. But yeah, this is uh, the power of the Offenus Bow. It deals double damage, and the way double damage interacts, uh, or the way double damage works, I should say, is... Um, for every damage value it applies, it applies that same value again. Now, <laughs> what Instant Dev does, it just reduces the enemy's HP to zero and just deals that amount of damage, which also gets applied twice by the Offenus Bow. So getting Sin is quite trivial from, from this point, assuming we use Renhilda. This is uh, <laughs> This is just Instant Dev fun times from here on out, really. Make sure to attack him by scrolling the menu. Yeah, overall, this run has been fine. Honestly, like aside from the the tomfoolery we had at the Natalia split, everything has been going pretty well. Really happy with uh, having this amount of luck. Was it good for you? I was actually really scared of showing this run off. Um, for those who were at my stream yesterday, I basically got perfect luck throughout. And I was kind of mad and, and happy at the same time. I was mad because it wasn't a real run, but I was kind of sad that... But I was also happy at the same time because it showed me that getting perfect luck is actually possible, which is something I haven't seen before. It's kind of a, it's kind of a bittersweet victory. Was it good for you? I did, I did see earlier in chat that somebody mentioned that this game looks a lot like Fantasy, Final Fantasy Tactics, and the reason for that is that this game was co-developed yeah. by Triace and Square Enix, which uh, coincidentally both had a hand in, uh, in Final Fantasy Tactics as well. That's where you can see the parallels as well within the, uh, the level up animation being very notable. Okay, now hopefully I hit the, the instant death range. You're not guaranteed to hit it, even with the spell potion. As much like the paralysis chance on Gleipnir's, um, sudden death is based on magic. Alright, didn't matter, got it in one shot. Gamer moment. Just absolute gamer moment. Yeah, instant death and off on his bow is, uh, is quite the combo. Probably one of my favorite things in the whole run. I just randomly golded, even though I saved. Um, I, I don't know if I should be scared or, or happy. This is quite weird. <laughs> like, we didn't even use a new strat. Like, every every bit of menuing was just fine, I guess. That was odd. Uh... 
Alright, so this one I have to pay attention. Um, it's very easy to mess up with the way the menuing in this game works. I've, I've messed it, I've messed up here more often than I'd like to admit just because of the way um, it negates inputs for a while. Like, we're supposed to activate instant death on turn one. Um, usually I end up pluming a Guste by accident. Oh, hold up. Again, focus is good. Don't make mistakes. This game does not like mistakes. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're very much supposed to spell reinforcement on Hilda again, just to make instant death more likely. And in 5-1, you saw me reorder Reinhild's attacks. Um, what I put first is Shrewd Shot, and Shrewd Shot has the bonus of not being able to be blocked, which helps on these Lizardmen. They have uh, quite a decent chance to block attacks. Any great house, it also has a slightly higher multiplier, which also helps in uh, hitting instant death more often, but that's, that's the minor upside. That's just gravy. Shoutouts to instant death. Ten of you would not suffice to match. And instant death, like while it doesn't work on a lot of the on a lot of the enemies here, as they are considered uh, undead or inanimate, um, it does help on every single living uh, living unit in this fight. And we actually get to use it all three turns, which is uh, a lot harder the route than you might expect. Like, I feel like a lot of the, the speedrunning things that happen in this run are just based off of routing and not necessarily off of running. Um, I guess that's the that's the case for most tactics RPG. Like, the amount of, of trial and error we had to do to get to this route is actually quite mind-blowing. I think I have, like, around 1,000 or 1,200 hours in this game at this point, and I'm still finding new stuff. Also, you can interrupt a single line of text or a line of voice with another line of voice, which you just did there. Shame we get to cut off Auguste's monologue there. He, he rambles on for like 10, 10 seconds or so. At least a lot I wasn't having any of it. Behind any great house. Oh yeah, something's coming up. Uh, we have counterattack. Counterattack is gonna give us the line stand and fight. And whenever Augusta says that, I would like everyone in chat to say the same. So I would like to see a stand and fight in all caps exactly once. Stand and fight. I think that hit the range actually. It did not. Stand and fight. All right, so we did get two of them. That's pretty good. Stand and fight. Um, <laughs> this range is just about a coin flip. It's pretty easy to go under. Mind and body are the weapons a man for but hey, we, we at least got an extra stand and fight, so we take those. We're gonna hear it another time in the next turn, as uh, another armor is about to attack us. Whoever typed that ex as exactly once, I appreciate that. As quite the cheeky... So sadly, since we're out of attacking range of this enemy, we don't get to counterattack here. But the armor next turn will uh, will give us another opportunity. And this bird is exactly why we have instant death for the last turn, um, and why we dashed Lee Salada for a single tile. We can actually get Lee Salada in range of the bird in order to kill her uh, to kill it. Now, even though the the bird here resists thunder, which is the attack that we use. It actually doesn't really influence the uh, the chance of instant death popping. However, now that he's dead, I actually get to say this: um, this bird can evade lightning bolt. That evade literally costs four minutes. It's <laughs> it's so bad. You basically you're forced to like walk all the way around the bridge and kill the bird in like an extra three turns. It's a lot more miserable than you might think. But luckily, luckily I actually shut my mouth this time and didn't get owned for it. This armor luckily not arranged and get ready for the uh, the second round. Hell yeah. The 777 at the end. Lucky 7s. This is actually not no technically it's arranged but it's uh, it's a very favorable range. If you get the exact lowest roll or all 6 damage rolls, you actually don't kill him. That's the only the only dumber you actually need. They were standing and fighting. Huh. 
So this demon is not going to attack us, and uh, we're just going to kill it in return. No issues there at all. So this is a fight you actually can't mash your attacks. Um, Auguste's first attack has a final damage tick that you can actually mash through. If you mash fast enough, you can actually get past that. So I'd like to take this one a little slower. <laughs> I suppose I'm out of my years. Oh, nice! We got Raptor Claws. Uh, Raptor Claws is an Auguste-specific weapon, and we just plumed them. So uh, there's not a lot of use for that one. Alright, and this is the uh, the fight coming up next, is the one we talked about. Uh, that one's extremely random, and might be... <laughs> might be the worst fight in the game now. But, aside from that, it has a really interesting, like, route. So, there are four different backups for that fight now. Uh, each of them being the previous iteration of the optimal route. So for some reason, no matter what happens, there's just a backup for almost everything. However, there's one pattern where I'm just going to straight up reset and not take the risk. It's fairly unlikely to be able to continue from there. Even though it's technically possible, it's very unlikely. It's not worth risking. Um, also, this goes horribly sour in like, what, four attempts or something? I'll just have to load the other save state and just keep going through the rest of the story. Much like 4-1, um, if the game doesn't want you to finish a run, you will not finish a run. This game is very merciless in that. Not not a lot of room for error, but if you take it slow, then you're usually fine. Unless you're unlucky. Un being unlucky is not good. But yeah, more instant death shenanigans. Um, Wilfred actually has the Shackle of Sin equipped right now, which ups Sin gain by 20%, so we're able to get 120 from this Swordswoman here. And as well as any other enemy Wilfred fights. Now hopefully, we get to save 30 seconds. We do get to save 30 seconds, let's go. Um, if Ryan Hilda doesn't land this shot, um, you, you have to go through the fight the normal way. Which is quite the time waster. Yeah, you saw there, 120 Sin Rot. Um, somehow this map is kind of laggy because of the snow. It's not that bad, but you'll notice it with the, uh, the scrolling up, in and out of combat, mostly. So we're going to have to kill the archer here, otherwise the archer gets to kill Lisa a lot in return. And we're also going to have to note that of a... Or we have to, we're going to have to take notes of a drop happening on the Lancer. As we get a bit more sin here. Um, the Lancer has a drop, has a chance to drop the way of Transposition. Uh, transposition is used in the next fight as well. And as the name implies, it makes your character switch with, uh, positions with the character that's up the free tiles away. And we want an extra copy of that for a fight coming up later. Okay, this is the good pattern as well. Now we have to get lucky to not get frozen. Um, if one character gets frozen, that's fine. If both gets frozen, that's a problem. And we got the optimal pattern. Let's go. That's actually pretty rare. So we should mostly be fine. There's still a bit of risk, but it's not that bad. So we used to set Dark Savior on Lee Salada. Um, Dark Savior has been... Has not been part of the route for a while now. Uh, and with a while, I mean two weeks. Um, as it turns out, we don't need the extra damage from Dark Savior because Lightning Bolt's pretty strong on its own. But Dark Savior has a funny thing with the animation that I could go into. Um, if you skip the cutscene for the animation, the Grand Magic Meteor Swarm actually won't have a meteor. Um, you'll just drop a fat load of nothing on the enemy. But if you watch the full animation, you'll actually see the meteor. Not entirely sure how that works, but... Hey, it's, it's the game. What can I say? This is potentially interesting. I don't tend to see this warrior attack me from the side. If I get stunned, there's a backup, but... Just hope it doesn't happen. That's the, that's the real talk. And I shouldn't have spoken. I got owned. This is fine, though. Since nobody was frozen, um, there's no risk in this. As we can just walk Darius forward and attack the warrior that way. First, though, we have to move Wolford forward and kill this sorceress. This sorceress is quite the pain in the behind. Oh, please. Can I just hit? Okay. Luckily, we hit the instant death. Uh, <laughs> not hitting the instant death is kind of bad there, but you, there's really no alternative. 
great house, there lies a greater woman. As optimally, we do kill everything in free turns here. Um, having Darius alive also is still very good. Of note, uh, he can walk two tiles in snow. Uh, I haven't even gone into the attribute of snow, which basically, if you want to move through a snow tile, it takes two of your movement, um, two of your movement options instead of one. So you can move up to a max of two tiles instead of four. So we're just gonna have to kill this guy right here. Uh, there's enough people in range to just kill him, but I'd like to go for Lisa Lavis just to guarantee it. Magic's pretty strong. We're spe we're specifically going to need Darius's turn for this though. We're also going to kill this sorceress real quick. Um, <laughs> it's it's honestly just required. So this sorceress, when she attacks you, has a small chance to use a grant magic of her own, which practically kills you. Um, there's no real recovering from that, as trying to kill everything within three turns is uh, usually just faster to, to do or to try again after a reset than it is to scrap it out. Now, I'm not sure what the a AI does here if Darius doesn't move forward. Like, usually we move Darius forward an extra tile. Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate. I do believe that does mean we have to scrap here. We do, okay. Yeah, see, so like, now both of them are out of range, which is kind of an issue. Normally we'd move Darius forward to aggro them, and I think I'm still gonna do exactly that. And then just kill him the turn after, with a bit of extra setup. There's a lot of, there's a lot of tight routing going on, mostly. I get, there's not a lot of backups, but what is there is actually really good. Um, hmm. Okay, so that is the same. That's good. We'll be able to recover from here. That's that's all I want. That's all I need to know. We're just gonna try and set up a uh, a soul crush on both of these. I think Darius dies because his damage is too high, or not. <laughs> I forgot the the last attack he does actually is a free hit, but it only causes a free hit if he's exactly two tiles away. Can I do this? I cannot. Okay. Uh, how am I gonna tackle this? Uh, does, is this enough? This is not enough, so I'm gonna need to put Darius in between first. Hey, again, this is just uh, the fun in routing this game. Like, scrapping this, this game out is actually a lot more fun to do than you might think. Okay, so who's Axis Raid? Your time has come. Lightning bolt! So we're just gonna quickly dispose of the last two. We should be able to do that in one turn and just call this a fight. And all things considered, that wasn't too bad. Um, <laughs> this fight can go horribly, horribly south. Um, <laughs> so I'm happy. I'm happy we we got a uh, a mild punishment for what we did. Oh yeah, voice lines. Uh, you mo <laughs> you mostly don't hear them because we skipped them, but there's a lot of loud screams. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good voice acting in this game as well. Like the speaking of voice acting, actually, there's a very interesting fun fact about them. So they did not originally have a voice actor for Reinhilda, and what happened eventually was the voice actor for Auguste um, actually got his wife. The oh my god, am I out of range? Okay, I'm not. But yeah, the voice actor for Auguste actually asked his wife to do the. Uh, the voice acting of Reinhilda, which is in game Augusta's wife. Uh, do I make this? Yeah, I do. Yeah, most of this is just balancing out, getting a hundred on the combo meter with three characters, and improvising when things go wrong. I feel like we've done a decent job so far. Like we got a lot of scrappy patterns that don't happen too often, but we managed to get through it. Yeah, this was the last hard fight in the game. Um, any great house, after this, barring an execution mistake, nothing. Uh, there's no RNG, no nothing. Everything is basically fixed. There's no real ranges, um, no real bad patterns. There's only a bit, little bit of time waste, but it's out of my control. And it isn't run killing.
in any way. We are going to save here still, because execution mistakes exist. And, uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of those. Yeah, luckily we did get a drop in 5-3 that actually is um, the second transmission. I also got encirclement somehow. I'm not sure where that came from. That's a new one. Okay, that's a decent roll in the golden egg. Um, golden eggs are also interesting. Um, they are an item that you have that is a one-time use and it boosts every stat by a random number between 1 and 9. We actually got some decent rolls on it. I don't think it affects a lot of the chances for paralysis, but... It, it might as well, it, it just looks fun to high roll, honestly. Yeah, we're just gonna mass paralysis everything and just go straight for the leader. Uh, that's how the next few missions are going to go. Like, the only thing is, uh, we have to do in the, in every single mission coming up is just kill the, the leader enemy. And we are going to do exactly that. We are going to ignore as many enemies as possible. And Langray crit. All right, we're gonna we're gonna be wasting some time, huh? So if Langray doesn't crit a single time, um, one of the enemies actually get the live, and we get to skip a despawn animation. But hey, what can what what can you do? Might reinforce. I have to agree with chat here. This game's music is phenomenal. I mean, it is a rearrangement of the original, but I'd say the instrumentals are done really well still. Like, it definitely holds up pretty well. Definitely sounds a lot more like a DS game than a, uh, a BS1 game, for example. Alright, we got the enlightenment boost on Langray as well, which is a random chance to boost his magic. Uh, so we're basically guaranteed to lose a bit of time now. They barely entered the aggro range of Royenberg, which is the enemy we are looking to kill. It's gonna make use of that. Oh wait. So we're gonna move down here again with Darius, just to make sure he moves to the tile we want him to. And then we're gonna swap positions with him and absolutely pelt him with arrows. And uh, while we do that, Helix. We have a. Uh, have, have you been holding up? I've been sad because there are no new donations yet, and if we want to see Mr. Shasta in a gamer hat, we need to get on that quick. Yeah, we do really need to be on that quick. There's uh, there's about five fights more remaining. They're not long. Uh, we're probably looking at like a 157, 158. I had to guess, so uh, you know what to do, chat. There, there's yeah, so only we got about 15 minutes. Sounds like. Yeah, give or take. You know what to do. Donation link's right there. I'll put it in chat right now. I mean, I, I really would like to see a gamer hat, honestly. That looks fantastic. I mean, Shasta is a gamer. He's also a, a fellow runner of Orgeland 4, as I've recently picked up that game as well. Ooh, neat, neat. One, one day I'll get better than Shasta, but I, I feel like that's a while away for me still. We do have these Rhythm Game Difficult Song Showcase incentives as well, along with the Bonus Run Showcase. And the oh, file changes. name, Monkey Ball 2 file name, by the way. Wow, these ranges were unfortunate. Alright, managed to get past low. That's all that matters. A fitting death for a pitiful wretch. Also, Wolfred's voice lines actually changed. Um, the moment you hit the C path, Wolfred's personality changes a bit because he's uh, he's basically gone on a murdering spree, killing all his friends off to go faster. Uh, and once you hit the C path, you actually see his uh, his post combat voice lines change. Yeah, from here there's only this is basically the second to last opportunity we have to save. There's going to be three fights in a row where um, there is no saving gonna make use of that.
Not sure why it didn't take my inputs for that long. That's new. Shouldn't be an issue though. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, this is the other fight where we uh, we used to abuse the uh, the death warp. Uh, that's not really a thing, though. We found a faster strat, sadly. Would have loved the get chat twice. This uh, this basically turns into a stealth mission now. We're gonna paralyze every enemy and just sneak past using stock on Darius. This is also the fight where uh, where AP gets to be the most relevant. Like you really have to manage your uh, your action points for this one, as you want to use a AD AP skill on Wilfred twice. It just like barely works out. Happy it does though. It saves about a minute or two. Good example of missing an input by uh, having to wait for the menu to pass. I think it's like five or six frames, it doesn't take it regularly. Ha. Yeah, the only enemy that isn't stunned by Gleipnir's is the leader. Um, that usually is the case. And the Realm Stalker, but we really don't care about that one this time around. Where's the spell potion? There it is. So we're gonna use an extra spell potion on Darius just to guarantee that he won't shots. You don't technically need it, but it just ends up being worth it most of the time. We actually have the Stalker as well, otherwise the uh, the Realm Stalker actually kills Darius. That's, uh, that's a very bad thing to have happen. We're just gonna confuse him for a second and uh, let him do his own thing. So we're gonna take Reinhold out of the equation for most enemy as well. Um, if there's nothing in sight as they un as they cure their paralysis over time, um, if nothing is in their aggro range the turn they go back, they won't do anything, which saves a bit of time animation-wise, which is why we walk Reinhold down nowadays. Okay, so now there's something I don't need. <laughs> it is. I found out after running this game, it is very easy to forget to use your instant death ability, so I'm just gonna remind myself to use it and not call myself out for forgetting this in multiple marathons. Uh, it's very bad to miss this, there are no backups, you're basically screwed. Uh, it's very much not recommended to do so. But we did it, we're, we're gamers. We don't forget this. Now he's get the one shot the leader, and that's the fight. Basically turned the tactics game into a stealth mission. Pretty good. I live to see another dark day. Every fight from here is uh, is really short. It usually just uh, is what two to three turns. And we did get the transpose drop, so we actually do get the guarantee that uh, that the new strat works. It is quite nice. Uh, I need to remember. Yep. Good. Probably shouldn't have done new strats and marathons because it's a lot. It's a lot of a hassle to remember, but like getting past muscle memory is a lot harder than you might think, as uh, as many speedrunners can uh, can account for in chat. I think. You also just talk about how good this trumpet is. Alright, Realm Stalker didn't get paralyzed, shouldn't matter. We're all good. She is going to move to this exact spot every single time. Uh, we're just going to scroll to Reinhilda here. Uh, transpose with the soldier. Or with the, the swordswoman, rather. And then we're going to initiate a raid with Darius. And whenever Darius initiates a raid, um, his, uh, his Razor Edge procs, which increases the attack of everyone by 20%, but it reduces the swordsman. I want to say magic defense by 20% as well. Okay, so this should be a guaranteed kill from here. 
Uh, does this kill? No. We'll use the we'll use the Soul Crush for Darius. You don't get to see this one often. You don't get to see it at all because we skip it because skipping is fast. But you know what I mean. And that was the whole fight. Uh, killing the leader is pretty efficient, as it turns out. Plus, we don't get to care about Realm Stalkers, which is a uh, quite a big plus. And if uh, we don't need to care about them, we actually do need to care about them next fight if we get unlucky, but... It's not too big of a hassle. It's a very important deployment here. You remove Darius and you start the fight. Uh, Darius is a bit, of, a bit of a time waste. He doesn't really have a point in the fight, and scrolling past him is... Uh, it's quite a bit slower than, uh, than removing him from the party. See, so yeah, another another classic case of uh, abusing Gleipnir's bonds here that paralyze everything. Hopefully we stun one of the two Realm Stalkers. It doesn't matter which one, as long as one is stunned. Uh, otherwise, we'll lose about 30 seconds to uh, being unlucky. And we actually did get the perfect stun. That's amazing. That's actually quite uncommon. It's actually more common for the one on the right to be stunned, because of his, uh, his RDM being lower. And we get to skip Pluminger for one turn, as uh, we are going to plan on pluming one of the most broken characters in the game. As is definitely in the pipeline. As uh, her plume ability poisons every enemy for a few rounds, Feather and every time it procs, it'll Unto give you like a I short animation and a tick. And it'll only proc on active enemies, so we'll only see it once, but skipping that one animation just. It's just a little bit of time save. Long has it been? Since such power graced these old bones. And we are going to exactly see why Reinhilda is broken. Uh, <laughs> this is probably the epitome of that. So, uh, if you've never seen something absolutely busted before, um, that's the fight. Shame we don't get to listen to this whole good boss theme, but. I mean, would not suffice to match me. in second the last boss, we just we just did it. That's it. I'd say that went fairly well. <laughs> yeah, there's only one more one more fight coming up. So if you want that gamer hat, I would very much recommend getting your donations in as soon as possible. <laughs> I haven't really had a chance to say it yet, but we we've got the gamer hat. All right, we're gaming. So we Mind do. If have, I read off. We do the have donation the time quick. Yeah, I'll just show off this cutscene for now. We do have the time for it. Cool. Okay, it's fifty dollars from Hobtor. It's no comment, but thank you very very much. That also got the first bonus run met. Hey, let's go. Can you imagine that they made this on a two forty p screen? This is actually mind-boggling how good this looks, considering it is on a, uh, what is it, 240x, or like 360, yeah. 320 screen? Wow, that's absurd. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's 240, 180 actually. It's, it's, it's wild, it looks good, that's all that matters. But yeah, we, we get to show it off, the, we, we do have the time for it, and I always like to show off the scut scene just for personal reasons. I feel like I did something wrong, and I did. I'm happy I'm sharp enough to actually notice. Gonna change the last bit of equipment there, just to make sure we are able to kill the Valkyrie in one go. And uh, fans of the Valkyrie profile series might have recognized the character just there. Um, that is Lenov, that is the protagonist of Valkyrie Profile 1. We're just going to enact our revenge for uh, killing our father, playing as Wolfred. And wow, we actually low-rolled pretty hard on those golden eggs. I just realized. It's actually kind of bad. So optimally, you would end up with uh, with 500 magic. But we, we ended up at 477. Doesn't matter, though. Everything got paralyzed. We're all good. 
This fight also guaranteed to succeed unless you're uh, you're exceedingly unlucky and low roll like 80% of your attacks, which uh, it's a lot rarer than you think. And that's assuming like you miss the coin flip and you miss a 25% roll as well. But these chances are getting astronomically small to fail. However, execution mistakes are still a thing. Nothing, nothing's off the table yet. We should be fine though. Just to make sure I am in the right spot. Okay, this is basically set up the fight. Um, <clears throat> time's coming up um, soon enough after we kill the Valkyrie. Um, you'll see a victory screen. Uh, when that fades to black, the uh, the game is done. That yeah, should be should be like a minute or two away. Oh, those attack rolls are actually really good. 11.47 is about as high as it gets. That's really good. The attack roll is actually the most important one on Wilfred. Yeah, the, the whole point of this fight is you have to repent for your sins, and everyone you've plumed in the game is uh, returned as an enemy, but we don't really care about that, as uh, we just get to get past them as they're paralyzed. It's not gonna put them for, through more misery than we already did. Alright, final fight of the game. Enjoyed the tune. This uh, this is quite the banger. Guaranteed the win here. Finishing. Grim vengeance. You can win with only one Go one drop, down. which is the guaranteed one, which is the most the most important bit. We had four attacks remaining. I'd say this run was pretty good. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everyone was entertained by this. Uh, <laughs> a life spent. There's a there's a lot of routing that went into this game, so I do have a few shoutouts to give. But first. Time. Alright, <laughs> with time out of the way, uh, I do have some shoutouts to give. Um, first off, Dragon Darch for um, giving me a good uh, a good start to run off of. Uh, that back when I started running, I had no idea, I had no clue how to run this game at all. And it, as it turns out, Dragon Darch had done a run before this with a VOD available, and that got me into running the game. Furthermore, uh, Huang is, uh, is the Probably the person who knows the most about the game probably knows more than I do, considering this ending. Uh, and honestly, everyone else in the community, uh, maybe he's watching the Japanese restream now, but Inugakushin has been uh, has been doing a run of this game as well before. And honestly, I hope he returns. Uh, so if you're out there, I'm, I'm more than welcome. You know, <laughs> you're more than welcome to the return, and I'll help you out if if it's needed. And otherwise, I would like to thank everyone from BSG. Um, I probably wouldn't have picked up speedrunning if it weren't for them, so uh, here we are. <laughs> yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, thanks everyone for watching. I hope you have a, have a great marathon, and uh, hope you enjoy the next run, which I uh, I do believe is kind of a huge deal. Oh, it sure is. And hey, th thank you very much. Anytime. <laughs>